Hello and welcome to the Comic Conspiracy, episode 132, take two. Uh, yeah, some minor recording issues, but hopefully this is recording properly this time. We'll you sure find, it's not user error? We'll, you know, it's totally user error. We'll find <laughs> out in an hour and a half if this is recorded properly. Uh, my name is Ryan Higgins. Uh, this is uh, the podcast for the week of uh, November 11th, 2013. Who is here with us this week? Omar. Bryce V2. <laughs> Toby. And Charlie. Once again, Charlie. And joining a special guest uh, this week is our good friend Jim from across the Asian pond. Jim, say hello. Hello. Happy to be here. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Jim walked in on us right as we were uh, right as we were recording a podcast last week. Uh, just about to finish up. So good to have you on this week, Jim. So thanks. Um, there's a lot of crap to talk about this week, but the uh, one thing I want to start here with is Sandman Overture Number One because I know um, uh, we talked about it uh, last podcast. Uh, but Omar and Bryce uh, were not on last week, and they have not read Sandman prior. I feel like this is a deja vu or something. It is. I don't know it what is. It is. It's yeah, the like to see if it goes a different direction yeah, this time. Right. Yeah. The no. friend, have you changed your mind, Omar? <laughs> <laughs> Charlie? Yeah, like, Charlie. No, yeah, all of a sudden, you've read all of Sandman at this point. <laughs> the first five minutes of this podcast will be oddly familiar to six people. So, um, uh, uh, Omar, uh. so why don't you once again tell the audience that didn't hear it the first time, what are your thoughts on Sandman Over? Which are having never read no, Sandman before. Uh, never read any books. I'm thinking of Neil <laughs> never Gaiman. Never read any books. any books? No, from Neil Gaiman. And I'm trying to think. <laughs> no, I have. I have. I just don't know which ones because they're probably some of his projects that just don't have big names on them. Because I never did. He did Swamp Thing, 1602? Right? 1602. Oh, yeah, yeah, 1602. Yeah. But that's, that was pretty, that was considered kind of popular. Yeah. Pretty big. Yeah. Eternals. Um, he did Eternals miniseries. Maybe I read a few of those issues. Yeah, so I read some Neil Gaiman, but no, no, I mean, he's probably known, best known for Sandman, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, I was more attracted to J.H. Williams than anything, J.H. Williams III, and uh, I enjoyed it. I wasn't loving it, but I'll continue reading it. Well, Bryce, having uh, not read any of the actual Neil Gaiman Sandman stuff, um, uh, but you did read this. What are your... (laughs) Not only not reading um, the Sandman Neil Gaiman, Ryan, <laughs> I also have not read any of the Neil Gaiman material, um, unlike my better read colleagues that are all laughing except for me, and I'm holding it in by the uh, uh, skin of my teeth. So, look, I understand that Neil Gaiman is incredibly popular. I missed Sandman. I regret that, and eventually I will get to read it. Um, but I have not had a chance to yet. But I picked up Sam Overture because he's supposed to be so amazing. And it At is. At the end of the day, the I mean, I don't. I mean, I'm sure that it is for those of you that are sort of that have gone through the school of Neil Gaiman. Uh, for me, it just. I mean, look, I I know that J.H. Williams is amazingly popular and successful and very, very good at what he does from Batwoman, which I have not read by my own fault. Neil Gaiman is very good for doing years well, and years of work, which I've not read, which is also my fault. So I came into this, look, Sandman's incredibly popular, Neil Gaiman's incredibly um, good at what he does, same with J.H. Williams, so incredibly good at what he does. This can only be great for me, and then... Um, you know, I read it, and uh, well, I have you to, should I have not to come ask, into this book uninitiated, do you is my opinion. get it? I mean, do you get what's going on do, with I a mean, little knowledge you have of the character? Yeah, I can kind of get it. It's, it's one of those things, like so many things, that I feel could be infinitely better if I understood anything from any of them. Yeah, which is yeah, yeah, sort of a cop-out yeah. to say, because it's like, yeah, fucking no dub, Bryce. But... Um, look, I, I think that if you had any better understanding of Sandman, any better understanding of Neil Gaiman, or any better understanding of J.H. Williams, any of those would have made this read so much better for you. And, well, and I didn't have any of those. I was just sort of going on reference like, holy shit, Bryce, why haven't you read any of these guys' work? Uh, so I was like, oh, well, I'll just jump in here. Yeah, don't jump in here. You should well, probably go back because, for me at least, it was, uh, I hate to say unenjoyable, it was just like, Look, I really wish that I didn't miss out on all the earlier stuff. Well, not to compare it to something like the Star Wars prequels, which is a hor- horrible way to start this, but you have something like the Star Wars prequel movies, which don't explain really anything. They basically are, you're kind of forced to have known what's going on in, in, in the regular Star Wars movies to kind of get the Star Wars prequels to a degree, because there's a lot of stuff in that. When you take something like the Star Trek prequel movies, I think for the most part they were given their own sort of uh, identity and let, left to their own devices, your own thing. New Game and Sandman um, uh, Overture, you, ab- I, I th- 
you pretty much have to have read the original Sandman to kind of get the beats that are going on in that in yeah. that book. I still think it's possible, and I think you can do it, and I think it makes sense as a story. But it's like you're you're dropped into a lot of ideas that just don't you don't right. exactly know what you're what you're reading. Right. Well, so. I'm actually glad that you were able to go ten seconds without bursting into giggles, Ryan. Um, but other than that, yeah, I totally agree. That was we're over it. I don't uh, know if Toby's over it, but but I'm over it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. I totally agree. I mean, the first yeah, couple yeah. pages, I was like, what the fuck? Like, what? Like, I'm sure this is great. And, and for everybody that read it, I'm sure that they're, you know, fist pumping and high-fiving each other, uh, you know, in their minds. Um, I was. And I wish that I could, I wish that I could join them, because Lord knows I do that about a lot uh, less well-written books. Eh. Um, but, yeah, I mean, to me, yeah, thumbs up. Uh, proceed to go on uh, pushing out your monthly books, Neil Gaiman. Uh, yeah, yeah, monthly. Speaking of which, um, do you want to talk speak, about that? Speaking of monthly, uh, they announced today, uh, being Monday, that because um, a new solicitation came out for DC, and in it was Sandman Overture number two, which had already been solicited, because now they've canceled number two and are resoliciting it because, I assume, a creative team, someone on the creative team, probably J.S. Williams, is very, very late on the book, and uh, it's not coming out till February now for number two. So bi monthly became not quarterly, what do you call it when it's once when it's three times a year. Is there, is there a phrase for that? Try yearly. Sure. <laughs> Try yearly. I just made that up. Uh, that works for me. <laughs> Sign me up with Jage Williams for the next book. Sure. And I mean I, I don't care if Sam Man comes out once a year, whatever. It's awesome, it's Sam Man, but that sucks because it was originally solicited as bi monthly. Yeah. With these Special issues coming in between that are going to be like you know breakdowns and sketches and crap like that. So I don't know, and that's not it's not unsurprising though, which which sucks. Right, but to a lot of people, it's like look, call it what it is. Everybody would have been happier. Well, I don't know about everybody, but a lot of people I would feel would have been happier if you said, look, this book is going to come out bi yearly. Deal with it. You know, kind of should just been a graphic novel at this point. Yeah, I, I agree with that even more. But yeah. I'm saying I hate it when any company does this, and yeah. I think that they're all you know perpetrators of it. Yeah, and they all sort of put the cart before the horse. But I really wish that this is another example of any like for example Joe Mad before Seth yeah. Wolverine, since I think that both issues that he put out of that were uh, <laughs> uh, on time. But I just feel like you know it's not going to be on time, and yeah. you know that it's not. Yeah. Just you know. Own up to that, and that's why they give him six months head start. But that's even just not enough. Well, if Williams has been working on this for, I mean, maybe a year. Yeah, but don't put it all on Williams, though, because they've shown promo art for a while. I don't see Neil Ga- Neil Gaiman going into this with the, with the work unfinished unless he was having some maybe some issues with DC editorial and they're changing stuff. Oh, you think that it is Neil Gaiman that was uh, no, on time? I would assume that. Neil's script has been long done, and at this point, you're talking with DC and J.H. Williams, who, as we've talked about in previous episodes, um, maybe not in the best of uh, relationships these days. So, yeah. hopefully, not a factor in it. But, um, yeah. of course, there's a factor in it. Yeah, it's a relationship that he has with mm-hmm. DC. Yeah, and a strained one. Yes, that's yeah. what it is. So it's strained with DC or strained personal relationship. Should have let Chase no, and Batwoman DC. get married, and then just change the creative team and. They would have just said, "Oh, yeah." Because DC happened. DC fired him off yeah. Batwoman. Oh, I or remember, I remember well, that. I he walked off. He walked off because right. of creative changes he didn't want to deal with, or um, editorial changes. Right. So. I was saying I didn't know yeah. if there was more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. JH, come to Marvel. Come yeah, to Marvel. JH, come to Marvel. <laughs> so so right, we, they already have Marco Rudy. He's like more on that level of telling great stories. So a bunch of random quick hits on here. Time. Uh, Image Expo returning to San Francisco. Uh, Thursday, January 9th. That's like right around the corner. I don't know. It was like last, it's like a nine months or eight months or something since yeah, the last one. So, it. which is cool. Yeah, it was nine months ago and it's yeah. 10 months away. That's crazy. <laughs> no. Well, that's because they're going to do it. <laughs> what? It was that's like because they're going to the... start doing it twice a year. They might. They might. <laughs> I mean, it was a lot earlier than that. So, yeah. and it's on Thursday. It's my day off, so I can actually go this time. Hooray. Well, Image had a way better year than Marvel or DC. Boom. They they had a good year of stuff. They had a good yeah. year of stuff. Not to mention with how quickly they're launching books, they have a lot to launch at each of these expos. So, this one's for Jim, maybe for Toby, maybe a couple of you out there. Um, Marvel finally announces the uh, Annihilation Omnibus, eight hundred eighty cool. pages. 
Yeah. I, I, I prefer Charlie's versions, which are the normal hardcovers. Now, Jim loves him some Omnibuy. I, I like him to be half <laughs> Omnibuy. <laughs> well, there's... They and have, half the price, too. Or they have, they have all a third the, of the price. They have all those early um, Annihilation hardcovers, which are three, right? Yeah. So more like than those. more well, than yeah. likely, this is you just gotta, you got to include the uh, the classic too that was in there too. There's like five or six, I think now, of the annihilation stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, at least yeah. I'm assuming this will be the tra- This will be the series, the mini series stuff uh, that goes with annihilation, and yeah, uh, and this will be just the main the main yeah. parts of annihilation. So a lot of people were asking where are those annihilation guardians, Nova omnibus or trades. Uh, since they're all out of print, and at least one is coming up. So, hooray. Now, if I could just talk Marvel into start doing slip cases with two hardcovers instead <laughs> yeah, of the omnibuses, they I'd really be should. happy. They yeah. really should. Well, some of these omnibuses are just too big. I mean, I, I like them in a certain size. Yeah. I like the and door. on that note, the Wolverine <laughs> Adamantium Collection. Well, that's in Charlie's oh, I size. I love that book. That's in Charlie's I, size. I love that book, too. I can't miss i got to put it on a desk to look at it. I can't even well, put it yeah. on my lap. It's, it's so Well, you need huge. to just drink a whole lot of milk yeah, and grow to big. his size. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's bigger than an oversized treasury. It's bigger than yeah, a no. standard omnibus. It is just a huge monster mm-hmm. Book. Yes. As that soon as barely, I got that book, that I barely fits on my shelf. It, it was <laughs> such a monstrous as a book that Charlie went home and took pictures with the book. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> they always have pictures of stuff like next to an apple or something like that. It's just a book next to Charlie. <laughs> 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 Yes, this book is eight feet tall. <laughs> Speaking of Charlie's looks, for those of you that can't be here tonight, Charlie mm-hmm. looks like Walter White. I just wanted to give a shout out to those of us that have seen all of Breaking Bad. Brian is uh, his hair's not shaved. Um, okay, that's true. I just meant the Grizzly Adams look. Oh, okay, okay. Um, the end of uh, season Plus, four. Can, can we shave Charlie's hair? I hair wasn't that. shaved at the end of Breaking Bad either. Oh, so okay. there. Well, there you go. Yeah, I spoiled it for you, Ryan. I'm still watching. I'm still watching it. His hair grows back. Spoiler <laughs> alert. <laughs> Uh, let's see. On their kind of crappy DC All Access um, web series thing that DC occasionally puts out for some reason, um, I don't like that thing. Have you seen any of those? Well, the They're most recent one. Overly excited. It's like crazy camera angles. It looks like uh, it looks like some sort of. Uh, You're just getting old, Ryan. Like crazy action movie, and they're like, <laughs> "Well, we're talking about Superman." Uh, I'm Brian, like, I'm getting old. I like to sit in my comic book no, store and I'd be mad at everybody. It's like <laughs> I don't need a standard shot, but it's like it's excessively crazy camera. Like, come on, Toby, did you watch these things? Yeah, a little bit. You're telling me that's not way too much like shaky uh, movement, didn't bother crazy me. cam. Ugh. At the, if it's overly anyway, whatever the content's all that matters, and there's very little content in them. Except, yeah, that, I was more annoyed about that. Yeah, I well, was kind of happy with this last one that I watched, especially because they had that little teaser for Teen Titans Go. Oh, they also had a bit of a teaser for the um, uh, New Fifty Two. This will be their September event, more than likely of next year. Um, the five year later uh, event, which is their. Uh, now, kind of rumored, uh, yeah. long rumored uh, event for next year. So I, I find it w- way too uh. weird to think about that we're already discussing next year's event as this year's event just got started. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, this is an event. No, this is the September monthly. Well, event yeah, but where the, the, all the books get the replaced. Villains books kind of led into Forever Evil, right, which, which just, we just started. started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now we're already talking about like. September next year, here's the next one. Which We're like in the middle of Forever Evil right now, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. we're three issues in. What do you mean just started? Well, it, it, it feels like it been just started. rumoring this for like the past month when like issue two came out. They first started talking about this five year later thing. And it's, if I recall, Forever Evil seven issues? I think it's seven, yeah. So that's seven months. That leaves four months between events. Yeah. Well, either way. Uh, that well, sounds about right. Well, this is just a, for, for, this is just a one month event, which is like all the books go forward five years, and they're gonna be like, oh, what crazy crap happens in five years? Oh, and then maybe some of it, and then nine tenths of it won't come in the past because that's just what happens. But eh, eh, I'd be I'd be curious to see what they do with it. We'll see. Um, but you know, I actually brought up Forever Evil uh, number three, which. Uh, I don't know if everyone's had a chance to read or who's here have read it or not read it that wants to read it. Everyone read it that probably will read it. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I just want to talk. Like yes. I don't. I don't need to Absolutely. talk like major spoilers for the issues, but I want to talk at least one one thing. We're talking Forever Evil right now, right? Spoiler. Yeah. So, so what's the one thing you want to talk about? <laughs> the one thing in Forever Evil number three that I want to talk about is this. A oh, number three came out. Yeah, last oh, week. Ah, oh, Jesus. Toby. How Kathy <laughs> Finch's artwork is. is uh, How unreadable yeah. it is. That's. I like not it. what you meant to say. Mostly but that's, fine. That's an issue. I think he just needs to do fewer books and yeah. focus more on one of them. It's not awful. It's just it just feels rushed. Like yeah, some of that could be the rushed. inking too. Like I don't know, weird inking or something. I don't know. Is it Richard Friend? I, I, th- he may just not be. Oh, the right don't match do this to Richard Friend. No, He's well, an awesome saying, guy. May, I know. I'm just saying he may not be the right match with Finch. That's all I'm saying. Uh, but you can't do biweekly um, books. Friend, friend is. Pretty solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm, it could just be their art styles. Don't mix. I'm, I'm, I'm a hate on Finch before I hate on Friends. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> no, no, no. The awesome thing that happened in this issue, and and no one talked about it, and no one apparently cares. But they finally fixed at least one of the rogues, and Captain Cold yeah. now is back to his original powers of just a cold gun, no superpowers, and all that. So when they relaunched the Flash in New Fifty Two. They decided to, as some of their updates to some of the characters, they decided to actually power all the rogues. So Captain Cold and um, is Mirror Master is that is actually part of him now, or does he still have the gun? I can't remember. I uh, think it's part of him now. But at least Captain Cold was sort of the most kind of painful that they took this character and now now he actually has a cold blast, like Iceman or something. And you know, some of the changes that did in the New 52 were like, eh, whatever. That was kind of the one that got me like, no, no, you don't fuck with the... It'd be like giving Nightwing bird wings or something weird like fuck that. that. Exactly. They, already, they already did that with Red Robin. It's okay. But That's actual fine. wings, right? Like, it just doesn't seem to make any sense. The character is so street level and not supposed to have superpowers. That is the point of the rogues, is that they do not have superpowers. I'm not even going to ask where Captain Boomerang's shooting this boomerang. Hey, now. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, well, okay. That was when, he when, they, when they had the Captain Boomerang, the kid with, like, the dark boomerang powers or something yeah. like that. That at least wasn't the actual regular character. That was, like, a kid that got his genes mixed with something. It's like, okay, fine. Well, I mean, there's also the brightest day stuff where they brought him back. And- but, again, I don't mind temporarily doing yeah. these sort of things. But this was supposed to be the permanent status for these characters going forward. <laughs> But it was still a good book. They didn't really... Uh, I agree with you that I prefer the non-powered versions of these characters, but yeah. the characters still stood for the yeah. same thing. Sure, sure. It's just, you know, to some people, changing Superman's costume was like, no, you can't do that. To me, it was powering the rogues. That was my line that was crossed in the New 52 that I really hated. <clears throat> and at least John's got Captain Cold back because he got... The Death Storm, the evil Firestorm guy, or Bl- Black Storm, Death Storm. It's Death all the Storm. same guy. It's like Black that's, that's Lantern, Death Firestorm. Yeah. Yeah. They all act the same way. Right, it's the yeah. same character. To, to he sees Captain Cold and he's like, "Oh, hey, you have superpowers. Oh, your DNA has been messed with. I can mess with it too." And he messes with, quote unquote, messes with it and gets rid of his superpowers. So now he just has the cold gun again. Hooray! Yeah. It's like <laughs> the most like kind of forced. For no reason this happened, but I'll totally take it because it just means maybe we have it, the actual it, character I, back. Maybe it was annoying Jeff Johns just as much as it did you. Well, that's his favorite character. He's like, fuck this, I'm getting him back. I, Honestly, I, I there's bet. been a lot of stuff in Forever Evil when he like touched on the Teen Titans. and he like A lot of the stuff he's touching right now, he seems to be kind of going, and this is how I like them to right. be. Right. <laughs> Well, there was some weird rumor on Bleeding Cool last week about kind of this fight between Johns and DC and trying to keep Johns off some of the books and being more involved with DC Entertainment and less on the DC comic side and trying to minimize the amount of books he's writing. Kind of him and Dan Didi are kind of button heads in the direction of DC, and it's like... Maybe it should be opposite. You think, yeah. gonna, you think it's going to be uh, any easier when they're all in the same building, on the same floor? Well, they already... Well, no. Right. But that's... <laughs> yeah, no, but then that's the problem. They should just they're have Johns run DC Comics. Everyone's yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would like to yeah. see... I would like to see more of the John stuff. You know, not that there's not good New 52 stuff. There is. There's a lot of it. But stuff like... the When you're really messing with... Here's the thing. A powered rogue... And Captain Cold with just a gun, you're not going to sell any more or less of any of these. It seems like why bother changing these characters? Your Supermans, your Wonder Woman, your Batmans, those are the ones that you need to kind of make sure you are, are accurate and right and go about stuff. Like, you know, Ryan Scott on the Geekbox was mentioned about Amanda Waller. It's like 
you're you're pissing off the people who are already fans, and people who aren't fans are never going to be fans of this character. So why bother changing these aspects? So these characters are never going to be Captain Cold. Never going to be this household name. But done no no way ever. So John just until that John Flash just, TV show yeah, takes well, off. John and, just declined any invitation but Jesus a, sent out to him. But a Flash, <laughs> but a Flash TV show would have Captain Cold with a gun. He's not going to have superpowers. Wait, wait, I told. Well, we'll you. find out. Yeah. Hopefully, I know really soon. I, I totally like, disagree, dude. I, I, I mean, like, look, I don't. I wish they didn't change Captain Cold, and I wish they didn't change Amanda Waller. I, I agree with that sentiment. But to say, don't don't you think it's a little short sighted to say that, like, oh yeah, changing these guys to try to make what they were trying to do with all the new Fifty Two was make them more hip and modern and young, and oh, changing any of them would be, you know, not. You know, it wouldn't make them household names. Well, isn't that what they're trying to do is do whatever would make them household names? Isn't that exactly what they're trying to do? But and yes, because it doesn't work, okay, it doesn't work. But isn't that what they're trying to do? Well, if they powered Captain Cold and made him awesome and then he started showing up in TV shows and movies, God forbid, Ryan's the biggest proponent of Flash cameo on Arrow becoming <laughs> the basis for the DC Universe Hell yeah. canon, Hell yeah. which I will, you know throw at you until it uh, officially doesn't happen as opposed to unofficially doesn't happen. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that they're trying to make him fresh and new, and if they catch on, great. And if they didn't, they didn't lose anything from not changing them from the old 52. See, to, to me, they analyze certain aspects of the characters, and I have to admit, by giving him a ice gun, where I agree with you, I prefer the non-powered version, it always means he can be disarmed. By giving him powers, it means he can no longer be disarmed by the Flash, who, fastest man alive, should be able to disarm somebody v- pretty damn quickly. But I think well, which is why it always made him that much more interesting of a character. Like, oh, how does this guy still hang with the Flash when well, yeah. he can be disarmed so easily? But oh, my, so my point is, when you kind of come at things like that, I can kind of understand why somebody might go, you know what, let's power the rogue so they're on more of an even footing. I can... I don't necessarily agree with the logic, but I can at least follow the logic. Anyone who thinks you need to make the rogues have superpowers to be on an even footing with the Flash completely misunderstands the rogues. That's the problem, is that these characters are ne- are not super villains. They never have been. This Coast City, or Coast City, Central City is not a super villain city. I mean, these guys are yeah. really blue-collar guys out there trying to not... not take over the world Uh, as i said i agree with you that they didn't need to make the change but at the same time at least i can see the logic behind somebody trying something different of course of course it's like oh we got you know he's just mr freeze let's make him different and have gun and now have ice powers but now he's just ice man or icicle or any of these other stuff anyway 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 whatever it doesn't matter i'm happy to dare do that to mr i'm happy he's back icicle or ice man Tread lightly, Walter White. Hey, they've, actually, they've actually approached that in the comic book where Captain Cold has been mistaken many times for Mr. Freeze or well, Dr. Freeze oh, or that. Dr. Cold or anything. There was, a, there, there was a fantastic thing in the DC um, Robot Chicken yes. special where they all go in to like, steal this diamond. Yeah, it's really It was funny. my week, damn it. Yeah, it's really funny. I've so. seen that and I totally forget it. I'm the worst fan ever. I'm that was fucking about, hilarious and I don't remember yeah. that scene. And I'm thinking about the rogues right now. You're right. Yeah, none of them were like super, you know, no, super no. powered. They, they just they, that you know, Weather Wizard had a wand. Yeah. You know, a Mirror Master no. had his gun. Yeah. Captain Cold had his gun. Yep. Captain Boomerang had the yep. boomerangs. Yep. I mean, Trickster uh, just I, had stuff. They're Trickster all had, the yeah. only one was uh, Zoom, Reverse Flash, and the rogues and, and them hate each other. Yeah. They're always like you are not a rogue, you are fucking a super villain who we are fighting against because you're going to fuck up our city as much as, you know, Well, they the had... Who's the other one? Gor- Gorilla Grodd. Well, the Grodd's not a rogue either. Not a rogue it's either. just those well, main the, five. The rogues <clears throat> are very intelligent villains in the way that Heat they wave. kind of went ahead and kind of go, these are the rules we need to follow to be able to operate without bringing in... Because if we kill people, yeah. we don't have the Flash throwing us in jail. We have the Justice League... Exiling yeah. us to another planet, right, or putting us in some yeah, basically they fortress of solitude thing. And yeah, the, there's one of those things which I actually kind of like that you could kind of argue that the rogues are such a part of the city that they kind of need to be there. You could even argue they bring in tourism dollars because <laughs> everybody knows they're not going to kill them. Right, right. <laughs> it's not like the Joker or something. Yeah, but we can move on from that. 
Um, I got a bunch of questions here, but I, I got one last topic uh, that I want to bring up uh, before we hit a bunch of questions and then go talk about Thor 2. And that is a brand new character who was just introduced to the Marvel Universe, um, but will be fully fleshed out in her own upcoming series. Um, <laughs> Dupe? Miss, Miss Dupe? Oh, man. I, I, man, I would kill for Dupe ongoing series. Dupe's my favorite. Sorry, I couldn't resist that one. Be a short now, read, Ryan. Now, this, this is... The, the silent book. This is a semi-new character. Uh, this is a new take on Miss Marvel. Uh, that they just came out of a new take on Miss Marvel, right? So we have the current Miss Marvel series or Captain Marvel series right now, which has the former Miss Marvel, now Captain Marvel, um, Carol Danvers, uh, flying around. Uh, there is a she's getting her book is being relaunched. Captain Marvel is being relaunched, uh, as well as all the other Marvel books are being relaunched again. Um, but there is a new Miss Marvel comic coming out. Um, uh, she is a Muslim teenager uh, named Kamala Khan. I believe it's uh, how you pronounce it. Um, is an American uh, American with Pakistani parents and is a fan of the previous uh, Miss Marvel Carol Danvers. Uh, she's kind of like the um, part of like the Carol Corps. I think they call themselves. I don't remember. Uh, uh, and it seems like she's going to be involved somehow with like the um, inhumanity stuff, where there's all these new characters becoming inhumans and all that. So, <clears throat> with a female Muslim character taking over Miss Marvel, one of the more patriotic quote unquote characters in the Marvel universe, as you can expect, there was a lot of uh, kind of typical internet bullshit anger over the sex and the uh, the religion and and you know belief system of this character right i have issues with this character but not in that perspective in any way shape or form and and maybe you guys hear me out and tell me what you guys think i have a problem with this because this is another case of a minority character being launched into their own title without any sort of um build up to the character by a mediocre to no name creative team with there will be some fanfare for the first issue, but I guarantee you this book will be canceled 12 issues in. When because, are we expecting this to happen? Um, I believe it comes out. It's got to be in the next previews probably for the number one because I already have all the artwork and stuff. So it'll be like February maybe. Is anybody um, reading any of the Van Meter stuff right now with Captain Marvel? And I'm, maybe she's a part of the, the She is in already? the very last panel or the very last page <laughs> of the most recent issue, number 17, which is like the last issue or second to last issue of the series. And it's just like... Like, her from the back, like, you don't actually see her, but she's looking at, like, a Captain Marvel poster or something like that. So, Marvel will put out press release for this. They've already started. There will be a bunch of variants when this comic comes out. My problem with this is, it is doomed to failure from the start, because this is how these always happen. Before the podcast, and a number of people brought up the Green Lantern, uh, Boz, the Green, uh, that Jeff Johns created for the Green Lantern comic book. Now, in my mind, this is how you create a new character that's part of a legacy but still a new character with some aspect of of some people are going to be like, oh, a Muslim character. Oh, no, we can't have, for some reason we can't have a Muslim character because I'm a giant racist. Um, none of that matters to me at all. Race, sex, religion, all that stuff is meaningless. To me, this is simply about how to p- properly market and sell this character. You had their number one creator, Jeff Johns, on, at the time, the one of, if not the number one book, Green Lantern, during a major crossover, this happened at the end of Blackest Night, where you are no, uh, no. not after Blackest Night. What was no, it? Um, it end hap- of um, it happened of right at the Army. beginning of the Rise of the Third, uh, third Army. Army. Yeah, I'm sorry, not, Army. not Blackest Night. Right third at Army. the beginning. Yeah. So you had during well, one of their appeared, major no, crossovers. It appeared well, in the no. Green, Lantern, Green Lantern Zero. Right. Well, well he, they, he they did the, right before that. They did the annual, which ended the Revenge of the Black Hand story that right. started the Rise of the Third Army, which ended with Hal and Sinestro being sucked into Black Hand's ring. So you have <laughs> – right. So yes. these are the elements you need to launch a new character and some may say controversial character properly. My concern with this is this is going to be another case where you know people are ecstatic this character is out is out there, and I'm sure she'll be on Young Avengers in in a year, and I'm sure she'll show up occasionally in random books from time to time. If you want to launch this character properly, you put her dead center in Infinity. You do it. With, you make you have her. You have her in Avengers with Hickman, arguably Marvel's number one book. Or hell, 
have her an all new X Men with Bendis. This is a character that was made for Bendis. Put her part of that. She's a mutant inf- affected by by inhumanity, right? Because that's all the stuff you know. She is mutated, right? Drag her. Ba- then she gets a fan base. Builds her up in the bigger Marvel universe, and then you launch a character. Launching this character cold, I'm telling you right now, canceled in 12 to 18 issues. And that's not just because Marvel cancels everything and renumbers them. This will, you know, the Captain Marvel book right now, and for some reason, I guess it didn't come out in October, but in uh, in September, it was the 134th highest selling book, which is not very good, at 22,000 copies sold to comic stores. I guarantee you by issue two or three, this will be sub that number. And like I said, canceled within 12, 18 issues, so about a year. Because this is, this is how all of these characters, male, female, white, black, Muslim, doesn't matter. This is how this always happens. And it's going to be another case of the exact same thing happened to another Marvel character that's just thrown out into the wild and left to fend for themselves and will not sell. And people will get all up in arms. Oh, why don't people buy these books? And I'm telling you, Marvel's promotion around this will not sell this title. And they're going about it the wrong way, That's which okay. is unfortunate. When they add her to the New Warriors, you'll start <laughs> touting this character. I, I, I don't care. I have no. I was waiting for that. You launch her in the New Warriors, and you. I have no concern <laughs> any way about about the this character's race or sex or anything. It could be the greatest yeah. character ever. Could be the worst. I have no idea. I have I, nothing. I agree with you. This isn't the way to potentially launch the character into immediate stardom but as we've talked about there's a lot of comics that get made that i think they kind of call it an ongoing but they realize it's really a mini series right i mean and look- i kind of see this as just the latest one of those i don't think anybody's looking at this going i'm sure i could do 50 issues of this i mean what you look at like the character alpha that um dan slot created for um mm-hmm. amazing spider-man Terrible character. Everyone hated him. They put him in a miniseries. Miniseries bombed. Horrible sales. No one bought it. Character's gone. You'll never see him again, right? If this happened with this character, then that'd be it, right? Like, you put him in a book. No one cares. Doesn't sell. It's inconsequential. Goes away. This is basically the same thing like launching Alpha into his own series. You have to go back to Runaways to find a series even remotely that they had some form of popularity, and even Runaway sales were never very good. Even when Joss Whedon took over, Runaway sales were not that good. And I mean, prior to that, when was the last time you saw a character launch cold into their own series that lasted at all? And this is continuous cycle of the companies failing to realize how to properly advertise and market these characters to the pre-existing fan base. You can't just launch these characters if you expect them to sell. And I think it's a disservice to the people who would become very big fans of this character. And there's already a lot. Tumblr's all all crazy about this character already because it's Tumblr. And so, but your book's going to be canceled. I'm sorry. <laughs> Marvel's been known for putting out the mort of the month for years for decades i know i mean i, know. And the, I mean they've even I'm going had, through boxes of even, all the thong gores right I'm, now i'm telling and, you go through you go through the, the 80s the 90s the 70s it doesn't matter what decade it was i mean they even had annuals where they in, in, introduced every annual that they put out for every book was a new they in, introduced a new character yeah, dc did the same Nobody, all those I mean, it, it's very very more yeah, missed yeah. Uh, of all those on characters, characters on those two uh, marvel and dc one character hitman that was the only character that went anywhere i don't know i just think i still think there's some good commentary social commentary happening that in comics that d- despite how they market or advertise things back in the 70s and 80s very few people of color go into the 80s then you see not only people not only seeing black people but you see mexicans and then asian people not just seen in light as just this yellow person with slanted eyes that's sunfire. on a panel <laughs> not but, just sunfire yeah well not yeah. just sunfire um silver samurai well, the, the fact that we do you know now we are in 2013 and we do have our second muslim character um be it uh you know you want to speak ethnically or culturally religiously well, i think it's than- great that there's now maybe i don't know two to five of them that you can put in you can count on your hand um i think that's great because we don't just need another white character um and i think that everyone sees that and dc but sees this, that and marvel sees that but but from a purely sales and, and and promotional point of view doesn't this do a disservice to that where a character like i said like boz where i think you had a character that was created in the proper book uh dusk from uh, Grim morrison's uh new x-men you had the best-selling Marvel comic by one of the 
personally one of the best creators in the industry, created this character. She hasn't been in a lot of books, but she's shown up pretty much on and off since since that book ended. She was in Young X Men. She was in uh, you know she's shown up occasionally. So I mean there are better ways to go about this, and I think this is relegated to that more to the month five issue miniseries that gets canceled and then you never see the character i don't know um, i think I, I didn't think it was a big blip on the news radar i saw it and i'm like oh cool another character sure it's a girl yeah i never cared about miss marvel or carrie danville's danvers no or whatever does. anyways i mean besides like all the hype the girls have behind like van meter and you know silly do comic whatever that chick is named you know it's just like it's cool that there's like a uh, a Marvel, you know, femme verse, whatever, but, uh, or Miss Marvel femme verse, but it's just like, it's cool. It's a girl. It's another girl. There's not a lot of, regardless of how it's advertised or marketed, at least they are spending some dollars in that way. Well, just he, like hiring, you know, more people of color. You know, it's awesome to see that there's a lot more artists that are like, well, you don't just can't, you just can't count that one Filipino or Chinese dude. There's like, dude, there's like three quarters of the artists in Marvel and DC are, for sure. are, are no, no, South American. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and it's yeah, incredible yeah. that things are becoming more blurred because it should be. That's what's representative right. of people that actually are spending the money or you're, you're trying to capture that dollar. But if you're gonna do, if you're gonna do it, don't set her up to fail. It looks like, I mean, well, that's what I'm wondering. You know, Ms., it's almost like it's being set up to fail. That, that's yeah. what, like, well, do you go into this with the point of? You know, let's put let's, some fake promotion behind this. No, we know no one's going to order it. We know it's not going to sell. Then when then when people say, "Why don't you have women or minorities as the major characters of your book?" Then the response is: This is the same response Tom Brevoor gives on his his um, his Tumblr answers every single day. Look at all these books we've put out. None of them have sold. People then say, "But well, there's been no promotion. There's been no push behind it." He says, "Well, we can only do what we can do," and it's just a rotating cycle that never ends. Uh, at this point in time, it doesn't really matter if it's a female or a male or whatever. An unknown character launched by DC or Marvel, right? Look by at, any creative team. I'm not look like, at the movement, right? Perfect example. The the biggest yeah. female writer in comics, and I sell one copy to some guy who it's gets every just DC title. Going to fail. I don't necessarily think that it means that you should stop trying to launch these books. If anything, I kind of think it's more of a rotating money grab of they can promote this, as you said, just based on the race, gender, etc., the character, do a huge push behind number one with variants, sell a shit ton, they last five issues, then they focus on the next thing. So, they can do the same so thing So is with. it like so, Minority Monthly or something like that, and just every six issues it's a new number one? I mean... I would not be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so Seriously. Is, so, yeah, my, my problem is that, uh, that there's any promotion around it at all. I don't know, because I wasn't there during the Claremont Burn era, if that was when Kitty Pryde's first appearance was. Yeah. Did yeah. they have big press releases about how they were going to no. introduce a juice well, it's a different comics are different now and, and these type no, of things I, I agree yeah. but uh, what I'm saying is why does there have to be a big press releases around yeah, for DC that's or Marvel that's actually how stuff they're I having like. this most when I saw this press release for this new Muslim character it's like why does there have to be a press release around it why can't you just introduce her and like it's organic and oh right. my god she happens to be Muslim that's right. you know that's awesome and by the way whether or not it fails doesn't become a, a topic of conversation. Yes, it's going to be, it's going to fail because it's you know Captain Marvel, and it's going to fail no matter the like you guys said the the race or the gender or the or the creed of the character. But it's like, look, it's going to fail anyway. Why are you having a big uh, promotional event around it? That's what's more aggra- uh, aggravating and irritating. I got a me. perfect. Why this is even a talking point? I have a perfect example: a white character by Marvel years ago that they promoted the hell out of and totally failed to Sentry. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I mean, the yeah. first series sold well, but that character went on to do nothing. Nothing at all. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. This I mean, is, people don't even know who the Sentry now is. Yeah. No, I mean, he showed up briefly in Bendis' New Avengers, and they wrote him out really fast. No, Marvel no. Zombies. He was in there for quite a while, and then he went on to Dark Avengers. It wasn't until Siege that they got... Took him out. Him. Yeah. yeah. No, but he's back now. He's uh, well, part of, course of the he's yeah, back horsemen. with the <laughs> Avengers. Yes. But no, he, he was, no one he was a mainstay yeah. for no one years and like the Avengers Avengers run. Ms. Marvel's been around since the 70s? Well, I'm talking yeah. about Century. No, no, I'm talking but I'm talking Ms. about Ms. Marvel's yeah. 70s, yeah, late 70s. Marvel's yeah. been around the 70s. So that's yeah. 
Yeah, because I mean, look at you know DC, DC, you know, Vibe and Katana, same thing. I mean, launched out there, tying them to Justice League, which is great, but you know those books are going to fail. There's no way. And both minority characters, it's not that they're bad characters, it's just, you know, Gail Simone's vibe is going to sell a lot better than Anna Seti's vibe, you know, and neither of them are going to sell great, but, but it'll sell better, right? Jeff John's Booster Gold sold better than Dan Jurgen's Booster Gold, right? Just because of the name attached Wait, to so it. Wait, so why is the conversation, what I'm saying is, why is the conversation around why are they putting them in a no-name ver- book versus a big-name book? Why can't they just introduce them in any book and they'll fail regardless well, well, look at on what, their own merits look or Look at not. what Hickman did to like the new Captain Universe, right? She's black. They didn't go out and be like, oh, we're have this new black character yes, in Captain Universe. Right? They just but made also, it- when DC did their big announcement around when they made, uh, was it Alan Scott? With the new fifty two, yeah, game. yeah, and it was like a big, it was a big announcement. See, it was like, why, why do you have to have a big announcement around it? Sometimes, why can't you just have them? Well, here is the thing: sometimes they're big announcements, and sometimes they become big news. Those are two separate things. This uh, Marvel definitely had a lot of push behind, and it got picked up a lot. Marvel hasn't started the real big hype machine for this yet. That'll be when closer to launch. Something like Alan Scott becoming gay was. Not a big push from DC. That was something that became big news. Yeah, because it's fucking. What? What, what are you doing? Just I. Oh right. God, I no, I no, I no, I hear it. And it's like it should. No, these type of things should be story elements. But the newspapers are involved with bleeding cool comic resources. Those are the those get the clicks. And those are the pieces that are going to be picked up on. And here we are talking about this character for 20 oh. minutes that none of us are going to read a single issue. Oh, yeah, that's why Omar doesn't know. <laughs> oh, I'm Captain sure I'll read issue one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll read issue number one. <laughs> I read have good clicks. I'll read any yeah, issue number go. one. So, yeah, Omar will care then. So. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I'll have her. All I want to see the new costume. We got a uh, – it's kind of got like a Superboy thing going on where it just looks like normal clothes with like the slash. Or I, mean, I missed the Warbird costume on Ms. Marvel. So There was no press release by Marvel when they uh, um, introduced Dusk, was there? Nope. No, because she was just part of Morrison's new X-Men. Exactly. Stuff. And yeah, that's was, how I she, think it should be, is that yeah. you just, you introduce a character and it is how it is. And if it gets a following, it gets a following. And if it gets and, a following, it gets yeah, a following. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like when they, when they try, you know that's when they're going to fail. Okay. It's it's so hard to, to, to think of a time when they're like, we have this awesome new character find of 2013, and... The big thing though is so, comics so world because of movies being successful and you know obviously you guys getting the shop getting more traffic from people that are just never you know after watching a few movies they're like oh I want to come into the shop and check out some of the books is this the, no, I'm not saying that's the case no what I'm saying is there's so many people calling them I mean if MTV ABC like every single big news company has like a little nerd blog yeah uh, um. Yeah. There's a, there has to be stories to be told, and these company you know these companies throw out all this information for them. Is this like, preempting the whitewash of Avengers two when they introduce a Muslim cap, uh, Captain uh, Marvel into Avengers two and just like why not? Well, to why be not? Both no, we have a woman. Yeah, I mean and Nick Fury, Nick white. Fury, Samuel L. Jackson now. You yeah, know, yeah, and yeah. No, I've, no, whatever. No. Yes, that's not gonna happen. They're not gonna <laughs> yeah. do that. All right, we got we got a ton of questions here hey, to read from people. We still have to talk about Thor, so let's get to a few. of these. Ryan, I would love to hear if there was anything new from Netflix. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh God, yes. Okay, more that's stuff huge, too. More that's stuff. That's too. Huge. <laughs> well, we'll talk about that with Thor. We'll talk about that with Thor. We'll talk about that with Thor. I got a bunch of stuff. Uh, okay. You know, I got a great you question. Use that the lead in the Thor. How's that? I got a great question here from Jonathan. I told him I was going to answer his question on the podcast. I'm going to do this next week, but someone remind me. Jonathan asks. Um, He's he's um he's considering starting up his own comic shop. He doesn't know where to start. That is such oh, a big oh. topic. I need to do that. Yeah, next no, week. Don't, we already that covered this a couple podcast. of times. We've talked about it once. We or twice. do like uh, look up episode blah 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 blah. I'll see Which if I, I can find the right episodes. Now. But but we're way far behind the schedule here, Jonathan. So I will answer this question next week because we're just I answering ask, on the forum. I could, I, I could do that. There's a, it's easier to say than is to type. There's a lot to say. I'll do this when I have more time. But and you I, can I, type I, forever. I'm, I'm, and I'm sorry, Jonathan. I told you I was going to do this on this week. We'll definitely do this next. Put together. Week. You know, okay, Jonathan. you should just make a YouTube video with Toby <laughs> and just put it up there. We could do that, Ryan, if you want to. Oh God, we could. No, seriously, yeah, we could do that because I mean that's a question that seems to come up on the regular. Yeah, 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 yeah. and yeah. if you want to, we could totally do that. Oh, we could do that. Jonathan, Actually, you need fifty k. Uh, well, in my game shop. Brock, <laughs> Brock, Brock said Mitchell asked, so why don't we get this out of the way? Are you excited about the shows Marvel and Netflix are doing? Ah, uh, uh, what shows? That's uh, why he didn't want you to ask. Going for no, I totally didn't even <laughs> see this question until right now. So, what Bryce was uh, talking about earlier, Marvel announced 
uh, as part of their cinematic universe. Uh, five, four TV show, uh, like 13 episode specials, and a uh, four, did they say how long? I think it was I don't four remember. episodes. Um, basically like a mini movie uh, uh, event. It's Daredevil. Yes. Jessica Jones. Yes. Uh, Power Man. Yes. And Iron Fist. Yes. Yeah. I don't think I don't think many of the people remember who Jessica Jones is. Jessica Jones was the Brian Michael Bendis created uh, alias, alias. Yes. character. Yep. Um, no relation to the TV show. Uover, Originally supposed awesome. to be Jessica Drew, yep. Spider yes. Woman, but uh, Marvel said no. We don't want to we don't have, want to her up. We don't want her having we anal just got sex her back. with Power Man. So <laughs> Jesus. Uh, boom. I. I <laughs> I expect the, that from Omar, but not. This is the comic, man. <laughs> um, not what they said. So, I don't know. That's probably what they said. So he created this character, Jessica Jones, who's yeah, just, just a private detective who used to be in the Avengers in this retconned century like storyline. But uh, she was only in the Avengers for like one arc and then got messed up by uh, Purple Man. And, no, um, no, no, no. She was in Avengers the whole way through. She was <laughs> yeah, just taking care of the baby. Someone's got it. She was just in the background, what? right? Uh, no. What? <laughs> Are no, you no, joking or no. No, she was in I'm like serious. she was in like seventies Avengers in like this retcon story that they had. Oh, oh that she I was a character named yeah. Jewel. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but her character proceeded to be in the entire. But then Bendis she's in all the new Avengers, Avengers and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Bendis yeah. really likes that character. Um, yeah. Anyway, Brock's friend, uh, I can tell you that this is very exciting. Yeah, and oh, yeah. Uh, actually, legit. And so, by the way, I don't know if you all caught it, but Ryan said, "Oh, oh, and the fourth, oh, and the, the sorry, fifth. Ryan, sorry, go ahead. sorry, the fifth thing <laughs> is a, a Defenders. They all team up at the very end to form the Defenders, and that's, that's so like Ill. a mini series. Love movie. it. So, so cool. Sorry. Okay, now go ahead, Bryce. No, I was just gonna say that what you said at the very beginning was that this is introduced into the Marvel Cinematic Universe yeah. as opposed to Ryan's uh, wishing that Arrow and the Flash cameo would be introduced into the DC ongoing universe which was never been corroborated. No. This has officially wait, part of the Marvel Universe which is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. with the movies and it's all one big universe which is why Marvel is better than DC. Yeah. Has and, and hopefully not brought to you by the same people who brought you Agents, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, you, you teed it up. I had to go for it. <laughs> Everyone Everyone's just kicking each other in the nuts and around under the table. Today. It's I love it. I'm I'm, I'm I'm really excited about this. Though. I mean, I've been i mean wishing for a Daredevil show for a while now, which I think Daredevil is perfect for TV. So yeah. much you know, for a TV show. Yeah. yeah, I mean well, the, the law cases, they you know all the lawyer cases they can do all those you know they can do that for the the, the weekly storyline, the stuff you can do at night. You well, don't it's, have to it's do only the thirteen episodes. Well, it's only thirteen episodes, but to start for now, with. Yeah, yeah. But are they going to run this like thirteen? And then the second show, and then the third show. So it's basically like this continuous year I long. I have to remind you that 13 episodes is like fairly common for the higher end TV shows now. Like right. Look at Game of Thrones, look at Breaking Bad, which I think is a little more well, than 12. No, he's well, no, he's yeah. well, and this is Netflix yeah. direct, right? So like Orange is the New Black is an example yeah, of a show exactly. that's high quality, that people talk about, that yeah. people go. It's like a destination. But, but if you look at it, you know, 13 times 4 is 52. So you basically go through and you can have a full year of this show every single week. You get 13 straight episodes of Daredevil, 13 right. well, straight episodes. Well, 13 Netflix episodes each? Each, mm-hmm. yeah. Wow. Netflix nice. tends to put stuff up at once. All at once. But but I mean, in 13, you, you know what uh, I mean. No, it, I know what it, you mean. It, it, they it can breaks, launch a new show every quarterly breaks. three right. months. What is, the, what is the date? Or they just said in the future. 2015, I think. Yeah. 2015, yeah. which I is think. like... Avengers are, 2. So maybe setting up for uh, for not only Avengers two but um, for Doctor Strange could be. Could yep, be. dude, amazing move by Disney yeah. and Netflix. I, oh, you know, I yeah. I'm telling you right now that this will when it comes out, everybody will be like, "Why the fuck hasn't DC done this?" Because this is an amazing move in terms of tying well, together the whole universe. Not only in terms of tying together like a, a, a an HBO-ish type of channel with the greater cinematic universe. But well, and these characters are a little darker, mm-hmm. and being on yeah. Netflix, you can kind of get away and do whatever you want. Yeah. But mm-hmm. at the same point, we have Our Man, for some reason, Booster Gold, again, for some reason, apparently still in the works, um, uh, Flash, uh, Wonder Woman, w- well, Wonder Woman, hopefully, um, John Constantine, again, five more DC shows on the way, too. Like, these are wait, wait, all going to hit... 
Mm-hmm. Oh. Was, like, when, in, when was this announced? These, these have variously the, been announced in the last few months the, in forms of pre-production the, the, right now. The Marvel like these, announcement was much more of a cohesive, this is what we're doing announcement yes. versus this is what we have in development. Right. Well, I yeah. also yeah. think with Marvel, it's one production company or one looking over four Marvel three Studios three yeah, production versus, company. Yeah. Well, I think the DC one, one is run by CW, the next one is run by Showtime, a group of right. Showtime. I mean, yeah. I'm ABC. not saying it's Showtime, yeah. but you know what I mean. I right, think right. it's all all over the place. DC yeah. just can't seem to get organized mm. on their inter- DC entertainment. Well, this also makes me wonder why they just moved. Uh, well, yeah. there's that. But, Jim, you also have to think about this. Two shows on CW, one show on ABC, one show on NBC, one show on Fox. That's a lot of, that's a lot of eyes on lots of different channels all bringing together DC. <laughs> you are incredible, well, dude. No, do you not think that's exactly the reason why? Uh, no, I think no, exactly I think, why is because they don't have their shit together. Are you fucking no, kidding? No, I actually... No, no. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I actually think those channels went to DC and goes, what can we get? And DC goes, well, you can have our man. I, and you boy. can you can fight for Constantine between two you two all channels. these non mainstream characters. Yeah, your yeah. your argument is that that their their solution is to divide and conquer and to get ten percent of the eyes on Our Man and ten percent of the eyes on Ma- Marvel has Fox. movies. It has Netflix. It has ABC. It has Cartoon Network. How is this any different? It's still split between all these different channels. Okay. I don't think it has because Cartoon Netflix Network. Thing hasn't happened co- yet. The ABC thing is terrible. The video game thing is shared with DC. And movies, yes, they've always been infinitely better at. No, no, comic well. books, Cartoon Network. They have like a... Cartoon our, Network our, our, is owned by sorry, WB. No, I'm sorry. That's I'm, what I'm trying to say right now. Uh, Disney XD. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, and guess, it shouldn't even be a competition. Can we just love both? No, oh, we do love no, both. But... but- Okay. The the only point I was going to bring up is by separating them out into so many networks versus the way that Marvel's done it is as of right now, they can do whatever kind of crossovers they want between Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the cinematic universe. And in theory, even potentially going into Netflix with that, because it's still sort of while Netflix is not owned by Disney, that's not what I'm saying. ABC has very close ties to Disney. It's owned by Disney. Yeah. So... It's sort of all under that same umbrella, so they can easily allow a certain amount of crossover into the Netflix deal. Versus when we've seen shows that get farmed out to here on ABC, here on Fox, they always kind of go, okay, but you can't use the characters we have and you can't use the characters that we have because they don't want to cross-promote the different networks. That's why characters like Our Man, characters like John Constantine are perfect to put on these other networks to allow them to still have a DC, that DC Warner Brothers logo on all these other networks and not affect sort of the major continuity that they're working towards. Okay, I can see that. I can see that. I have a really bad feeling that in two, three years, there's going to be so many superhero shows that everybody's going to be tired of it. They just want to watch cop shows. I don't think so. They just want to watch cop shows again. Yeah, there's not a lot of cop shows. Superheroes new reality shows. They're going to go back to that. I don't know. I think people, most people don't know. It's only the nerds that are talking about it, and we're like the minority. Because (laughs) when people watch uh, Red or Red 2, no one talks about Warren Ellis. But no, I, I'm just worried that the same thing like sport cards, something like that's going where the market is so overthrown with superhero movies and all that if stuff. If it's quality, be, it'll stick, I think. I'm worried. I, I'm personally, I'm a little worried. They've been talking about that so, since uh, Watchmen, where it's like, oh yeah, now that they've gained self-realization with regards to movies, you know, uh, it's all going to come tumbling down. There's an, an article in Entertainment Weekly that I read when Watchmen was coming out, like, oh, now that they're all self-aware... Uh, superhero movies. Um, it's all downhill from there. <laughs> it's like, all right. For the record, I agree with Omar in this discussion. As long as you keep the quality up, people will come. Right. As soon as you have a couple of crappy ones in a row, people won't Shield. look at the next one. All right. Uh, we got a question here from Walzo. I'm going to go around the table real quick. We'll do this. Um, he's basically saying, hey, DC guys, what's your favorite Marvel book right now? And Marvel guys, what's your favorite DC book right what now? What if you're in the middle? Oh, we'll, we'll deal with that in a second. Jim. You're more of a Marvel guy. You're definitely more of a Marvel nice, guy. Nice, I'm a Marvel omnibus guy. You like Marvel that, more Jim. than DC. You, I, you're a big Marvel guy. But you read some DC. What are you liking right now from DC? Give me a title or two. Uh, Green Lantern, absolutely. Still? All really? Of them. All of them. Right now? Yeah. Well, Jim doesn't the, read all the single issues. Yeah. I, so, I, I read. Yeah, well, I you just, haven't hit it so yet. He's, huh? he's, yeah, <laughs> going, yeah, you haven't hit it yet. yet. <laughs> so the current Green Lantern, the last few issues, have not been so hot. 
Boss. I haven't hit those yet. Thank you very much. Okay. 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 Maybe you should stop buying Green Lantern now is what we're saying. <laughs> just just I guess, buy that last Jeff Johns you, hardcover you, you that know, just came it, out. And- this question is very difficult because prior to fifty two, New 52, I was reading a lot of DC and a lot of Marvel. And then Marvel, uh, a lot of DC. And then New 52 hit. And a lot of them I, I didn't care for. I still read my Green Lanterns. Now that Marvel did Marvel now, I was reading a lot of Marvel. And I'm not picking up a whole lot of Marvel these days. I'm picking up a lot of independent stuff. So um, I still leave, I still read my Green Lantern. Uh, I still read Captain America when it's good. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And it's been a, a lot of hit and miss on that one. But uh, yeah, those are the two. Those are the two books. Yeah, Captain Mar- Captain America and uh, okay. Green Lantern. I guess going around the table here, it's going to be Marvel, 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 and DC, DC, DC. So Omar. <laughs> You're loving Marvel right now. You still occasionally read some DC. You throw him a bone well, occasionally. He has taste. Yeah. What you, no, what, no. I mean, I would say my what collection is still 50-50. I know. But I'm definitely more excited about Marvel books right yeah. now. So, well, what's getting you excited over the other side? Well, I was going to say the other side of the street, but now it's the other side of the country. Yeah. Um, what, DC, what DC books are you getting excited for these days? I actually like Batgirl again. Um, I like Batgirl because it's definitely it's there's more heart to it. It's more about a father and daughter conversation rather than her and just a bunch of like... Uh, random villains. Uh, definitely, I, I really feel that uh, you, you feel like you're in Gotham too. So it's just a good, really good extension of the Batman family. Um, Barbara uh, getting down, getting down and dirty with some Mexican uh, gangster thug kid, and then he gets capped. That's fucking awesome. By her dad, Dude, it's like I mean that's some enthralling shit. So I'm really loving Batco right now. Uh, yeah, but all, all over. I mean, all in all, like the things that have been on the top of my radar is, has been everything Hickman. So Bryce, I don't even have to say anything. Are you reading any? DC? Are you, you're reading Forever Evil, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm reading Forever. I mean, New Fifty Two for me has been a two year long nightmare that I'm waiting to wake up from. <laughs> um, I haven't read really very much at all of it. I did read the Green Lantern stuff. I picked up some Batman stuff. Um, because you have me nonsensically on this on this Grant Morrison train that I can't get off of. Um, and, well, he's done now. And no, no, I know, I know. And and I stopped just because I'm going to have my Grant Morrison binding, and uh, and that's it. Um, and uh, yeah, Forever Evil. Other than that, sticking with Justice League because you can't really go wrong with the, the main flagship. But other than that, yeah, I've just been waiting to get off this crazy train, and I can't wait till they bring it back to the old Fifty Two, which are the stories that I grew up with. All right, but you know what's been great? Uh, is... Okay, Toby, Toby. <laughs> so uh, you say you're fifty fifty for your favorite characters, Nightwing. So you're a DC guy. What are you liking for Marvel right now? Gambit. <laughs> wow, nobody nobody saw that one. Yeah, Actually, the Gambit, Gambit series was surprisingly yeah. good. Yeah, it was pretty good. It's over too, yeah. though, right? Yeah, it's not yet. It's oh, it's still yeah. Over. No, no, it's no, done. So it's, done. Yeah, it's, it's done. done. No, but it's still coming. Totally no. done. It's, it's done. It's over. It's done. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I, I didn't read it to that point yet. Yeah. Darn it! The end um, is coming. Anything by Jason Aaron? Are you reading much Marvel right now? Young Avengers? I don't read it. I don't like it. If you like Gambit, you love that Phantom X Max. Oh, mm. the Phantom X Max has been good. The awesome. the the Spider Man uh, Marvel Knights. Uh, I only read issue one. Issue two just came out. I haven't read it yet, but that's that was surprisingly good. Hush, like Omar. I, I just I haven't, Omar mentioned it last I week. Still garbage. I, I'd be honest. I disagree with that way too much. <laughs> yeah. Wait, which well, one? Which one? Tom Marvel like Spider Man was terrible. Not, oh, what? I cannot From call Mr. Marvel Neil Knights. Gaiman wannabe. Well, not wannabe, but uh, I'll be. I'll, what are you talking about? I'll be honest though. I don't. I I'm not compare it to Hush. What's that? What it's the exact same in the, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but it's the exact same in that it's a it's a single villain facing off against myriad foes, all of his rogues in one story arc. It is in that way exactly like Hush. It is no. is it as well written or as well illustrated as Hush? No, but it, it's oh, not, it's not the how, same. How about this? <laughs> you know, I said Hush, but what I meant was Jeff Loeb and all of his cookie cutter, cookie cutter stories that he always does. He did the same thing for Daredevil, he did for Spider-Man, yeah. Yellow and Blue, and then he did for Batman and he called it hush and it's the same thing he did the exact same thing long halloween yeah. it's just all yeah. the rogues gallery i don't like tim sale as much i like him more than frank quietly but uh everybody else at this table likes we're gonna uh, we're gonna just stop before you guys yes. really start getting me mad okay okay <laughs> Toby, i thought reading, we were past that point are you reading any marvel right now what are you reading you gotta be reading me, no I, i'll be honest i'm more excited for like wild blue Lo- wonder and stuff like Damn. that these days marvel and dc only things you're, that matter you're killing us tonight. sorry Sorry, Remember, just, we're ninety percent Marvel DC. I, I, of course, I, of course, joking about that, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do a little indie live here in a second. Um, Thor, and, God and by a second, I mean a week and a half. Uh, um, what's your What's your face, Charlie? What are you, Hawkeye? Uh, you're a DC guy. What are you liking at Marvel right now? Superior foes. 
Thanos, well, I was just going to go Rising. with the main superior Spider-Man right nice. now. Good I mean, pick. It's, it's been consistent and good and it's definitely a good highlight whenever it comes out. Um, I, I could list quite a few things at Marvel that I've been enjoying quite a bit. But yeah, I'd say Superior Spider-Man is like the top of my list right now. Ooh, I got a shout out. I got a shout out to Batman and Little Gotham. Which in the next issue, our uh, fellow listener Lane is going to be inside, supposedly. Nice. Uh, I, of course, am a DC guy. Uh, however, there are a lot of Marvel books I like. I was also going to pick Superior Spider-Man. Uh, but since uh, I cannot... That is a great book. But since I cannot pick that... Um, I'm not disagreeing. I'm it, just saying, come on. Really? I'm, I'm going to pick the- Secret Avengers. I've really oh, liked Jesus. this. Re- <laughs> I've really You're not liked happy this. happy when he picks a Marvel book? This relaunch of Secret Avengers. No, but I know exactly why he's picking it. Why? You're picking it because it's like a it's 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 the movie version of Avengers and it's it's relaunching a title in no way the normal quote unquote normal i.e. Uh, standard protocol Avengers for the Marvel universe and so because it's totally different Avengers than what it's I mean it's a Shield it, comic that's why you like it it's a Shield comic yeah, straight it's, up it's, it's just not called Shield Shield comic and straight out of the movies yeah it's very much a Shield comic inspired by the movies but I've, I've really liked it they kind of have this yeah. thing where they put. In That's their your heads. favorite Marvel book right now? No, but it is one that Isn't I am that really question? liking. What he just said? I stole his favorite Marvel yeah. book, so I this mean, is superior, his second. Superior favorite. Spider-Man would probably. I mean, it I've, doesn't surprise me at all that Higgins has only one favorite Marvel no. book and has shared it with you, and that his second no. favorite is some like revamped. Uh, look, I've read it too. It is no, good. No, but it's there's like, about. Oh, really? I would say of there's. That's your favorite. I would say there's a good ten Marvel books that I'm reading on a, on a regular basis now that I really enjoy. Um, and, and this is just. An, and I think Secret Avengers. It's getting canceled and relaunched, and so it'll probably be yeah, totally different. Because it's not as good. I can think you, you're reading ten Marvel books. I can think of about ten that are better than Secret Avengers. Uh, okay. Well, I'm trying to throw some love to one that all maybe of them begin with the X. <laughs> just well, I, I was just waiting for you to name all the ones that he spent the last like three months bashing on the podcast <laughs> yeah well that's not a short right, list. Me, that's a separate episode by itself we got a ton of questions here let me see okay what, can we get on to thor yeah as well? uh, let me let me let me grab one more here let me grab one one more here okay it's totally not about comic books but let's talk about this this is from dar fox um can everyone on the podcast sound off on whether they're picking up a ps4 or an xbox one next week i figure it's not comic books but let's get this out of the way some next gen video game love jim no nothing nope Oma, I don't. I, don't uh, I play PC, so okay. Well, you're always next gen, then. Yep. Omar, I'm only strictly tabletop now, so I, no. Yeah, uh-huh. just clicking, huh? Uh, clicking. Yeah, just click. <laughs> PS4. Yeah, Blu-ray boy. player, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah nice. Uh, Toby, you getting anything? anything? I'm, so wait, I'm waiting for a Steam Machine personally. <laughs> Steam Steam Machine? I'm waiting for that nice. personally. Nice. I know what Charlie's waiting for. Well, that, that PS4 Vita bundle. Yeah, I mean. Uh, I'm in no rush to get a PS4. That's one I will eventually own, but yeah. I'm not buying it next week or anything. Yeah, I think yeah, I'll buy it in like two years. I got my I got, three. I got my launch. Am I the only one? I got my launch day PS4 pre-order for Amazon, so I'll have that Friday. Well, I'll be honest with you. So my have P- fun solo playing. My, my yeah. PS3 is mainly a media center that I watch all my sure. stuff on, and I barely play games on it. So Do you actually don't? use the media center thing on the PS3 like to connect to your computer? Because they're taking that out of the PS4. I use I I run Plex off of my computer, yeah, which okay. uh, I can yeah. access through my PS3. I, I don't love. know if you can do that anymore. Really? Yeah, I don't know. The media center stuff's getting taken out of the PS4. Well, that's what I, I love about it. it. That's why. I don't even know you're. I'm assuming about. they're leaving in Netflix. Oh, uh, we and have stuff, to teach. Oh yeah, 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 It's yeah. pretty cool. Okay, all this all this comic book talk is just all this video game talk. Save that for the geek box tomorrow night. Um, <laughs> Thor, Thor two, Thor the Dark World, whatever you want to call it. It's a new Thor movie. We all saw it. We all saw it. You saw it. Of course. Yeah, we all saw it. Um, I, I like to do, when we do these, kind of just go around the table. Just have a minute or two each. And don't, go, don't go on, Bryce. <laughs> a minute or two each. I'm fine. Give, give us your thoughts, and then we'll have a little group discussion at okay, the very that's end. Fair, that's fair. I think I know, I think this is going to be one of those boring ones where we all liked it, but start with Jim. Start with our guest. Oh, it's not boring, baby. No, oh, not boring at all. I loved it. Uh, and I'm gonna love it even more when I go see it again uh, this weekend. And, and also give it some sort of like ranking in the Marvel movie universe Ooh, right oh, now. Oh, okay, I should, I should have I'm thought gonna, that was coming. I'm gonna have to put this one just under Avengers, but uh, I, I think I have to agree with you, Ryan, above uh, the first Iron Man movie. Wow! Okay. Holy. I so, like so I like a, I really liked it a lot. And I like two. it even more when I start going through and, and looking at the Easter eggs. I was really surprised and. I don't want to spoil anything late until later on, but it's just it, it was a really good movie. 
Oh, and by the way, full spoilers for Thor. So if you haven't seen it, we're we yeah, so oh, we just doing it. Ranking well, on really, Marvel Studios movies. I mean, okay, I, I I hate to say this. This is like a lot of these movies. What's there really to spoil? He fights a villain. He beats some. Like, uh, there's so many comic he movies. Beat him? This is not what movie did you watch? And this no. is not a this is not a, a slam against comic book movies. But I think all the spoiler stuff comes before the movie. In the actual movie. Except for, like, things after the credits. There's not a lot of spoiler stuff, I guess. But anyway, anyway, anyway. Omar, go ahead. Yeah, call it a comic book movie. It was just entertaining. It was fun. Uh, I loved the first one, and I loved the second one. Actually, I liked the second one even more, because I thought I really thought that it was going to be, like, the Iron Man 2 of Iron Man. It was just going to be something that we've seen again, and there's no surprises. But the film was just quality. It really felt to me like that same experience I had when I watched Star Wars, and I watched Empire Strikes Back, and I was just like, whoa. It, but it wasn't mature and heavy and dark. I mean, there were some parts, yeah. You know, Frida going out like a G. That was sick. I love that. Rene Russo killing it. Uh, getting her scratch on. Um, I, l- I really like how they positioned uh, their their key players. Um, Loki got so much shine. I mean, this could have been Thor Loki brand. And I, it wouldn't I sell saw any differently. Some reviews that were like, oh, this movie wasn't good. It needed more Loki in it. I'm oh, like, dude. are you... He dude. was in like two thirds of the movie. Yeah, he was big, and he was the G. Like, dude, for that that freaking uh, what is it? The curse to cru- cruise by and see that motherfucker sell. Why? So I ain't letting you out, fool. <laughs> I ain't letting you out. Like, there were so many great moments. Uh, Loki just, stole that movie. Yeah, he, he, and just like yeah. he did the first one, right? I mean, yeah. he really did. Middleton, he's got such a crazy fan base, and we his can smile see why. is just so good for yeah, Loki. He's awesome. His smile is just dead on. Loved it. Yeah, it was it was a great film. I put it uh right, right after Iron Man and then Avengers. Sounds good. So I have one minute. Um, you, you have a, f- a few minutes. No, no, no. Take I'm just playing. Um, so I, I also really loved it. Uh, my wife 55 and I, seconds. Uh, went down to... <laughs> thanks, Troll. Uh, my wife and I went down to Carmel for the weekend. We were going to go see Gravity, and she uh, blessed me with the... Oh, yeah. fuck. Iron Man 2 is out? Okay. Husband, Iron, Man can, Iron Man 2. Oh, I'm sorry. Thor, yeah. Iron Man 2. What kind of movie were you sorry, watching? Sorry, sorry. Well, my mind was on other things that night. You have um, notes on it. He, he was at the Blockbuster before it closed. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also troll. Um, so, yeah, I put it uh, on my list I, uh, that weekend with my wife. I, I ranked all of the comic book movies that have come out. So uh, oh. I put it... Um, just below the X Men movies, which will shock nobody. Oh, um, I actually put it below Iron Man three. Um, I I liked it uh, less than Iron Man. 3. I really really liked it a lot. It was fucking amazing. I was shocked because I didn't read, I didn't see any previews, and I didn't read any reviews before seeing it. Um, the fact that it was uh, uh, we were there on opening night was just a happy accident. Um, I really really enjoyed it. Uh, making Malekith. Uh, on like a very successful mo- live motion picture that just crushed the competition this weekend before infinite other Marvel or DC characters would ever make it to the big screen, I thought would never happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, very good movie. I was surprised to see that it did not do very well in Rotten Tomatoes. I guess I, sh- I will say that I was surprised, although I probably should not have been. Um, I loved every bit about it. I thought that Natalie Portman was as amazing as always. Tom, um, is it Hiddleston? Whatever his name or is. Hiddleston. Yeah. Yeah. Hiddleston. Hiddleston. Loki. Uh, <laughs> did it, uh, not surprisingly an amazing job. Hemsworth, I thought did just as good a job as he always does. Uh, the writing was great. Kat Dennings was uh, uh, also funny and not annoying. I was anticipating her being annoying, and she was not. Um, she was a little annoying. Well, you also didn't like the, uh, the kid in Iron Man 3. Um, you actually didn't like Iron Man 3 at all, but let's save that for a different episode. So Thor 2 is a little bit worse than the worst movie ever made. Got it. Okay. Yeah, well, this is Good coming try. from the guy that thought that Man of Steel was the third best superhero movie ever made, which is the worst. Anyway, um, so I really like... Out on DVD tomorrow. Yeah, I can't wait for that, said nobody. Um, so... Um, I really liked Thor 2 a lot. I actually called Higgins. It was like midnight or whatever when I got out and was just so excited. The after the credit scene, which I won't talk about, was so amazing. No, talk about it. It's totally oh, spoiler free. We'll wait till we, we'll do the full around, then we'll do the after credit. Okay. Okay. That was like, I was, I loved the movie. I loved the movie. And after the ending scene with Benicio, yeah. my fucking, I didn't know about it Benicio. at all. Benicio. <laughs> what? That's, keep going. Keep going. Keep name. going. What's up? Um, my fucking hands were on my uh, on my forehead. Like, what the fuck just incredible. happened? Incredible! That was incredible. It blew my mind. Um, and then the after after credit scene was also very funny. But that mid credit scene was fucking blew my mind. Anyway, I loved the whole movie. 
uh, uh, I give it ten out of ten, uh, nine and a half out of ten. Bri- uh, nine, nine, nine out of ten braces. Nice. Dope. All right. Well, I liked it a lot too. Surprise, surprise. I guess not, but <laughs> uh, I yeah, I loved it completely. Uh, out of the Marvel movies, I probably put it right up there with Iron Man. I'm not actually not sure which one I like better because I'm really psyched up right now for Thor. So totally, yeah, I have to wait a month to give it a real judgment between yeah. where I put the two. But uh, it is definitely one of my favorite Marvel movies right now. Uh, if we're talking all comic book movies, it might be a different situation. But damn, they did a good job. Uh, everything was on. You mentioned just about every character, but man, I gotta give it up to the guy who played the scientist. Man, he was fucking good in this one. Oh, oh, look, the scientist. Yeah. Um. Oh, guy. Stone Skarsgård. Yeah, yeah. Stone Skarsgård. Oh, he was hilarious. He was so funny. He's he was so good. Fucking great. But he was great in in Avengers and Thor yeah, yeah, One yeah, yeah, too. Yeah. He was better here than he was in either of those two movies. I think. Uh, yeah, sure. I, I do like to see him without pants for some reason. So, you well, know. <laughs> that makes two of us, yeah. Tobias. <laughs> so, um, my my only little little gripe I have with this movie was when this ancient race of dark elves were attacking Asgard with these high tech weapons. That are, yeah, they're magic, but they came out guns blazing, and they're fighting these Viking dudes with swords and stuff. I didn't really buy that for Thor. Thor has always been, I mean, it's in outer space. It's always been, even back to the Kirby days, half fantasy, half Which is fine. Technology. Because I had some flashes of He-Man in there for me, so that was all good. But for a race that's, you know, it's been alive for this long, and another one that was sleeping for all these years, that they just wake up and come about guns blazing and take the entire town almost down? Well, they ran. They run shit before. It was before well, the Dark Elves. But, were. but so much yep. time but, has passed, though, is what my problem with it is. Tobias was pissed uh, until uh, Odin came out with his laser sword and just mowed uh, yeah. it down. And then yeah. he was that, like, that but, was like, now it's a fight. Yes, okay. <laughs> but I, I do see sort of Toby's point because they were running at him with swords, not really stopping blasts or anything as they're all getting shot. It is a little weird that the Asgardians, who are supposed to basically and they're coming police with all these airplanes. the nine realms and everything don't have things to prepare for to defend against guns well they do heimdall and the shield but that's the thing it got taken down they're like uh no one ever attacked ask no they do have the little cannons and stuff well but i i I understand about the shield and about that but still the the fact that as toby said the dark elves already had this technology they were already fighting on fields way back when it just seems to me like the Asgardians would have more than one range weapon, well, two counting Thor's hammer, two range weapons to- Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a small gripe, but it's something that I noticed right away go, uh, well, okay, I'm also, not buying this but whatever, we I'll also keep don't, watching We also don't really know how long they've been preparing for this invasion and right. coming, coming back, I don't but think But I really- seem like when Natalie Portman uh, touched the ether is when uh, the Dark Elf woke up Right, right, but they're always going to have better weapons on the on the attacking forefront, the first wave, than they're going to have in the throne room, where they're like, "Oh fuck, we, we're not prepared for this." No, we just have I, our swords yeah, and shields. I, if they had like some offensive attacking force on another planet, then they would have different weapons. This is just like, "Oh fuck, this is what we have on us right now." This just happened. That didn't bother me at all. Anyway, well, that's my only little grab for it. Charlie, go, go. Which, which thoughts? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so yes. Like everybody else, I really, really enjoyed this movie. I thought uh, certain scenes in it just sort of blew me away with how well they played, how uh, it, it's sort of like the little things that really stand out to me in a lot of these movies, yes. like the scene where Loki and Thor are walking down the hall and they, Loki keeps messing with them. And oh, that was a brilliant awesome. scene. I was going to say. Uh, I, my other favorite scene was when yeah. Thor was hanging up his hammer when yeah. he <laughs> walked walk through. I mean, I loved that. Just that one so, shot. Yeah. It was so good. The, yeah, the Captain America cameo oh, was yeah. a crowd pleaser yeah. in, our, in our audience. So. And just there were quite a few scenes where I'm just like, damn, they played that perfect. Like another really great scene is when Thor's standing outside Loki's cell and he says, let's get away with all the illusions and then you see exactly sick. I love that Brilliant yeah. all, scene. Uh, all of those scenes are like just to me what makes a movie like this it's not necessarily the big fights with the sure. dark no 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 it's, it's always it's always the little it's those character interactions that really kind of steal a movie like this that kind of 
makes you see who these characters are and everything. And, Absolutely. Um, the other thing I will say, and like I've talked about this with like Man of Steel and that kind of stuff, I love seeing powerful characters being powerful. Mm-hmm. And like I did not feel like they powered down Thor at all. To like, for the most part, you don't really see. Th- yes, Thor can't necessarily throw um, Malekith around or anything, but at the same time. Thor's taking every blow and getting back up and like power level wise, it was perfect. Mm-hmm. And when he uh, smashes that, that big, uh, the big rock monster guy at the beginning. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I, I just, yeah. so awesome. <laughs> that, that for me is a large part of what I look for when I'm looking at one of these powerhouses uh-huh. that are in a movie is I want to feel like it's really that powerhouse. And yes. a lot of times they fall into that. Well, we need a deep power room to make it seem more threatening. No, no. And that did a really no. good job. Yeah. Yep. No, I, I also love the uh, subway scene too, where Thor is stuck and is like, <laughs> where, how far am I from Greenwich? She goes like three stops. He goes, okay, well, let me get in. It's all you. It's so awesome. Yeah. I do have a question though, so which <laughs> I'm curious, somebody who knows more about the Thor mythology than me, might explain. So as Thor's stopping between the different realms, they made it seem like these were different planets or whatnot because the hammer started going off into space to catch up to where he was. Is that something... Because I've always sort of pictured the different realms as different dimensions that were completely cut off for each other. If if Thor's trying to call his hammer from Asgard and it's on Earth, it ain't going anywhere. Okay, so the, the, way they, the way they depicted him was as almost as dimensions, but mm-hmm. that was basically just another portal. Yeah, a portal yeah, to that's another. That's kind of how I it's saw another it planet. It's just another branch on the tree. Uh, yeah, just real. Yeah. Y- Yudistril. Yudistril, yeah, yeah. yeah, that one. The tree. The tree of So life. it's just another uh, way to get to the planet. Just like when they were walking so, between, walking through portals to another place. Well, I, I understood that in terms of sort of dimensional and that kind of stuff. But I've, I, I just found it a little weird because I've never pictured them as like physical areas inhabiting the same. No, they're not, though. Yeah. I mean, there's so first of all, there's only nine of them. Yes. And second of all, this only happens in this movie once every 5,000 years. And Well, I'm just asking at least in terms of comic book lore because I can't remember anything that specifically says or doesn't say that these have some sort of physical presence. Like I, I, I can make the argument, as you said, that because the walls were weakened, but then you would think the hammer would go to the closest portal to Thor if it was able to do that. Why? Wait, wait, so you're arguing that the convergence well, isn't coming, or you're no, questioning what I'm, whether or not how what I'm questioning is, and right, this the is the, ha- the portal. The hammer should go the shortest path to Thor yeah. instead of a long path. Well, but I'm questioning why was there a long path? Oh, because I've never really pictured, uh, I've never pictured Asgard as being something that if you had a really fast spaceship, you could travel to. Oh, I did, for some reason. I don't know why I did, but I did. Except for once every 5,000 years. Isn't that what the Heimdall thing is? Is that really fast spaceship to get Thor off and off the Rainbow Bridge? Yeah. Open the Bifrost. That, to me, is that super fast spaceship that you're talking about right now. The Bifrost? Maybe. I just, I've never pictured it that way from comic books. So I'm basically just asking, is it something that I've never pictured correctly in comic books? Yes, the answer is yes. Okay. Yeah. Do you have source material that you can <laughs> point me? Not that would satisfy of? you, Walter. No. Um, <laughs> so no, I mean, in the comics, they're going to do it very different, right? It's gonna well, no, be I, I just more spectacular with colors and yes. everything. Whereas I know, I just, on, I just on, remember. I think on a movie, you know, you see you going to space. It's I remember awesome. watching okay. this really horrible Marvel cartoon back in I don't know when when. The things weren't really animated. They were like cutouts and mouse were moving. Oh, the old, um, slow, the old motion ones they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were the on original I, ones. I, for some reason, Thor was going back from Asgard all the time, and he was going on the Rainbow Bridge. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. just figured that the Heimdall thing was a cooler, more efficient way of making that work. Yeah. A little well, more realistic way. Yeah, but... Because in the, in, in the cartoon, it seemed like he goes, I got to go to Asgard. He went on to go on the Rainbow to go right. to Asgard. Well, you know? I, I've always pictured the sort of rainbow bridge and thor's hammer being able to traverse because i always kind of pictured that as opening a portal that allowed him to travel the realms or dimensions but i always kind of pictured them as sort of like parallel universe kind of thing where Mm, they aren't 
actually connected they're within planets, physical space. They're not planets in our universe. Oh, so yeah. I kind of, yeah, yeah, I don't know. So I, I just found that there. sort of interesting because that sort of changes the way I look at the things slightly, making mm-hmm. them... Like, I think Superman could fly to Asgard, personally. I thought it was very well done. There's a portal. Yeah. There's there's portals to the nine different realms, and there's not 52. There's only nine, <laughs> and they only show up in on Earth. Once every fifty-two, or sorry, once but, every five thousand years, and uh, and it's called the convergence. Only Earth, yes, only Earth has the convergence, so you can see all nine. But the other realms, like you saw uh, in Asgard and in the Dark Elf, whatever the fuck, um, the Dark World, they each only have the one portal to Earth, but Earth has portals to all nine. Um, well, because because were, were, no, Earth no, was the center of the convergence. No, no, no. Right. no that's because yeah. they were at that spot. So at that spot, I feel right. like in all nine realms, you could be at that spot because you saw the Asian guy looking up and you yeah, see from the other. Yeah, but you, yeah. And from, the, the from parts his name is Hogan. Yes. Jesus Christ, Tobias. It's one really of the most incredible. Asano. Yeah, Asano Tadanabu is yeah. one of the okay. greatest Japanese actors okay, okay. of our time. Does that answer your question, Charlie? Mifune. Well, just actually the mention there because now I'm picturing that scene where he's looking up, which gives a physical connection at the time which would yeah. explain why the hammer was traveling that way but he could only see okay. the other eight realms could only see one through their portal i understand i was just questioning the why was thor's hammer going up unless it was trying to get to another planet but no i guess that would be a central portal or something that so, now, with this being in London, didn't you expect the Torchwood to van to just pull up eventually? That's what I kept seeing. I'm like, the Torchwood van is just going to show up. Oh, Jesus, you guys love this Torchwood show. You Torchwood should watch it. Oh, yeah. speaking of Torchwood... Oh, anyway, anyway uh, I... No no big questions for me. I also thought it was very good, so sorry. No no Amazing Spider-Man or Iron Man 3 uh, discussion of, of how bad a movie is this actually was a really really good comic well, only, movie. only one of those was bad ryan and, you so, know, this funny. is really bizarre only 52 ryan ryan bad. comes back and this is an awesome marvel movie oh, he is. also liked the wolverine most marvel movies wolverine are awesome yeah the wolverine was great what yeah the wolverine was great. yeah it was no, really it was really not? good yeah it was so good no you know we're just making me more and more convinced he's just a scroll now no the wolverine <laughs> was really wolverine, good. wolverine or ryan <laughs> Oh, we talked about this. I think the last like ten minutes of the Wolverine was kind of dumb. There's no reason for him to have been in that armor thing. What like that was stupid. But the rest of the movie was really good. Yeah. Anyway, Thor. We were talking about this. <laughs> Thor. So I was about to bring up Wolverine's costume, but okay, keep going. What's what's Charlie funny is, is Wolverine. While I was watching Thor, I kind of thought about something because as much as I like the Batman movies and Man of Steel and no comments from the peanut gallery, those movies are so heavy and so like just. Just, just heavy. That's all. The, that's the only word I can really think of. That is like they're, they're. I don't want to say they're not fun. They're fun in their own way, but they're just so like, oh my god, it's just so incredible. With the Marvel movies, and it had been a little while since Avengers. I hadn't. I kind of forgot that this is. These are the fun movies. I'm not saying they're bad, just because they're fun. But they're so much lighter, so much poppier, so much fun, so much easier to get into. And I don't feel like emotionally drained at the end of them. Like, end of Man of Steel, I was like, that was incredible and I want to curl up and die. Like, at the end, not because it's bad, because I really liked it. But it's just like, oh, <laughs> oh it's just so oh, much. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bite that. Bite your, we'll bite him, your we'll face. Let him, let him say what he has There's to say. just so much emotion in those movies, in the Batman movies included. <laughs> And so Thor, for this Thor movie was just so fun and light and poppy, and just like it, it really hit all the right marks. It was real funny. Um, I, I thought What's Her Face was a little annoying, but she was annoying in the first one too. So, but you know, meow meow and all that, and that was funny. Brought she that only back, said it so. once, man. Yeah, that's fine. You only need it once. Um, it was meow meow, um, and that's a good, it's a good little callback and everything like that. And like Toby, I love him putting the hammer on the little hook oh. thing. That was funny. And, yes, and uh, the, the Captain America scene, like. I, I get the biggest smile on my face during that scene because, the, and, and again, I want this in the DC movies as well. And we're obviously going to get it with Superman and Batman. But um, like, I'm so excited obviously. because Marvel has now done it enough times where it's like they, this is now kind of the staple in the movies that we're going to get these nice little crossovers. And that worked perfectly, just perfectly. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I again, Avengers is still this kind of high bar for the Marvel movies for me. Uh, I thought it was just so much fun. Uh, Iron Man really number two, and this is to me right there with Iron Man. Um, you know, I mean, I think Iron Man two, Captain Thor are right below that. Uh, it, it not and none of these are bad movies. I think 
I just think this worked better than the first one. Yes. Uh, and hopefully Cap 2 will be more fun, more exciting, more action. Yes. It's kind of the origins out of way. the way. Into, or uh, be more trailers. serious. The yeah. trailer's awesome. Yeah. It doesn't have to be super serious, but it, but just just get that action and really just crank it up to 11. Cause well, I feel like Cap 2 with both super. Thor and Cap, it looks like with the first one, they kind of did what they had to do as in the origin. They're right. laying the, the train tracks, and now they can just go have fun. Right, right, so right, right, right. So I'm very, very excited for Cap. And yeah. as you were saying, as the, the fa- balance between fun and serious, I feel like between Iron Man and Thor 2, they did it the best out of all the Marvel yeah. movies. That there was these serious notes in there where you totally feel like you know the the Loki scene yeah. in, in 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 jail where he's all ripped up inside and stuff, and you could see it. I feel like the balance in both Iron Man one and in Thor two was done so well between that and the humor yeah. that it just worked perfectly. Where the other movies, I'm like, I'm not there, but these two were so well done, and yeah. I think there's the successes in that. Yeah, I mean, I really went into Thor two, and again, this has a little bit to do with it with. Very little expectations. Not because I hated Thor 1. I like Thor 1 a whole lot. But it kind of felt, eh, maybe the least kind of... Yeah, I I was surprised by I the this, numbers this, this much. Thor yeah. number 1 kind of felt by the numbers, even though it was really early on in the Marvel movies. It kind of was like, I liked it, but I'm like, okay, well, all of them are going to kind of be like this. I think they really took a giant step forward with this movie, which gives Agreed. me hope for Cap 2 for upcoming movies, for Avengers 2, that they can keep building and not just set into this trend of like, well, we're a thing, we beat a guy, and that's the end of it. I also like that it seemed like the, the threat was happening so fast that Thor couldn't call the Avengers because I was a little worried that if this big thing happened, why can't you just call his buddies up, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But yeah. it seemed like the thing was happening this fast that like he goes, oh, I have to just take care of it. Right. It seemed like it was happening so fast that even Odin couldn't. Couldn't handle it. He was well. The Odin yeah. just wanted oh, to watch, dude. Yeah. And the ending, oh, yeah. so yeah. brilliant. So which, sick. which we can now talk about the ending and, and the after credit stuff real quick here. <laughs> Holy so, shit. Before we wrap up, so the end of the movie, which in the middle of it, uh, Loki dies. Right, Loki gets stabbed. <clears throat> yeah, he sacrifices yeah. himself. Right. Um, but anyone kind of ha- even half paying attention, um, a, a rescue team goes to find Thor and Loki, and they find you know they come back and say, "Oh, we found a body," but they, they very clearly show you that that guy was. Loki yeah. when he gets on the planet. Like, well, I thought that the guy that reported the body was Loki. It was. It was. Yeah. Right. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. right. when they show him on the planet, it was like, like a green the, light. The green yeah. glow. Yeah. The glow. The change glow. As he starts heading back to the ship. So that's him. Like, obviously, Loki wasn't dead. Uh, and then the very end of the movie, um, uh, uh, Odin was telling Thor to get out or whatever the hell he's like oh you're not you know kind of kind of convinces him he's not ready but did you but but the way around he was he was proud of him and he was like good job and thor was actually saying he doesn't want to do this but But he wasn't forcing he was the whole earlier in the movie he was kind of like you're going to be king and you're going to be yeah but i feel like loki was saying things so that thor is making his choice on his own is going off and he knowing he wouldn't choose to become yeah and And that's the perfect loki you finish right but loki loki did uh, there is something else i don't know if you guys caught on this but when thor offered his hammer over Okay, mm-hmm. and and Odin Loki said, "No, you didn't." Oh, Loki, Loki, Loki can't, take, can't it. take it. Right, it would have dropped to the floor right, right. at that point. And Odin uh, can't. Right? Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh. he, and he's oh. like, and he's like, notice. he's like, keep it. Yeah, yeah. And as long and as if you're you worthy. Notice, if you yeah, notice exactly. when he was sitting on the throne, Odin was very regal. He had that nonchalant little cocky going on. That's a freaking Thor statue. That's a Loki statue of him sitting on the throne, mm-hmm. all cocked up, going, you know, I'm I'm the king now. This is it. This is my <laughs> yeah. throne. Oh, I didn't notice that either. Oh, dude, there are so many Jesus. Easter eggs in this movie. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there have been a lot. Next date night with Jim, not my wife. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, you know, at the very end, of Loki turns back to Loki. So whether Odin's mm-hmm. gone or what the deal is, um, uh, there was an announcement. There was a, there was an interview with Anthony Hopkins that was posted today. Anthony Hopkins said that uh, Odin's dead. Two is enough. For yeah, me. yeah, yeah. So whether yeah. it happens or not, what? well, yeah, I'm telling you, this is just this is from the internet today. So I, I I saw that and it was like abridged a little bit. It, it sounded like he what he pretty much said is he doesn't know, but he's done two of them and that's good. Yeah, mm. it's yeah. difficult to, to. I mean, so much. FaceTime is you can only capture so many people. I mean, all the different. Well, actors. I, I think you kind of you, you could say he's you know he come in. Oh, Odin's gone. We don't know he's gone. We don't need him back right the, away. The truth so. is, we don't know where Odin or what right. happened. Yeah, right. I mean, at one point he grabbed his arm. You know, uh, uh, if you see whenever he's getting ready to fight the uh, Dark Elves, 
you know, he kind of grabs his arm like maybe he was, you know, either ready for the Odin sleep again or wearing out or yeah. something. You know, you don't know if gods can have heart attacks, too. Uh-huh. But uh, that was one point. They're aliens, Jim. You know, so uh, I'm, I, was, I was watching this movie. I Re- loved it. I was picking real, it up. No, I like that. I like that. Real, uh, real briefly, because we could wrap this up. Um, the end, the very, 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 very end of the oh, movie no. has. Well, hold on, hold when, on. Force very... up and give me your mouth, Jane Foster. <laughs> <laughs> to me, that seems so. It was unnecessary. And they oh, show I the funny it. little alien like, dog <laughs> thing run around, which is fine, which is but fine. But here, here's my, my thing. So, you know how S.H.I.E.L.D. is supposed to have that complete crossover with Thor? Yeah. Okay. Which, tomorrow night. Yeah. I'm guessing it's going to be Wait, about. I'm guessing it's going to be actually about, you know, the, the little portal thing where the shoe disappears and stuff like that. Probably. But I want it to be so badly about Not that the giant dog. dog. Oh, that They need to funny. chase that dog. Yeah. The if they can chase the that dog, giant and dog. Shield, oh, my God. That would be the best crossover episode ever. Hey, I don't think awesome. awesome. the birds. The, yeah, there's no way they can handle that dog, just so you oh know. Oh, my God. They should so do that dog. <laughs> what about Sky? She great. seems. Nope. She could nope. ride the dog nope. if she wants to. I don't care. She rode that dog. I'll crash the dog. I might eat her. Maybe crash oh. the plane into the dog. Yeah. That's about watching, the, dog watching the dog eater too. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now the real ending that people were talking about is the midway through the credit. There was this first kind of after credit scene, and then the other one. I never, yeah. never expected Benicio del Toro to be the collector. Oh, so, that was yeah. fantastic. So this starts. Didn't that feel like as a Doctor Who scene when you watched it with the lady walking through? So, so this like, starts oh, dude. with um with um uh, Sif Sif Volstag. Volstag, 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 right? Yeah. Walking through what looks like a season one Star Trek, uh, like set, <laughs> looks, right. it kind of looks like my library. Actually, it looks <laughs> like it looks. <laughs> it looks you like human gym. Okay, we'll go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> With this totally like Doctor Who kind of alien painted girl leading him to, and and this scene felt so out of place in the movie, but yeah, it it, it brings up something oh. kind of interesting. It they find they run into. Uh, the Collector, who is played by yeah. Benicio Del Toro, um, who is going to be the, I believe, confirmed the main bad guy in the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Um, no, I thought it was mm, someone else. I thought that they announced Ronan. Yeah. Right. Ronan and, and, and uh, the Accuser? Yeah. Right, and and uh, whoever, Korath hmm. the Pursuer. Free Empire? Okay. So, uh, so he's going to be probably one. So of, I don't know, but well, the collector as, is not a bad guy. He is one of these cosmic he's entities, an antagonist. Yeah. 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 right? Yeah. Who basically uh, just yes, he's, he's a braniac who just I'm col- I collect the last of stuff. Elder right? of the universe, yeah. Yeah. amazing, yeah. amazing, yeah. amazing hero yeah. clicks. <sighs> but he's going to be an antagonist in the movie. Ronan okay. and Korath are going to be the villains, I as far as I understand. That. But anyway, in the comic books. The Collector has one of the sure. Infinity Gems, yep. um, where Thanos later, when he gets the gauntlet, goes through and collects all the gems, because Adam Warlock and all of them kind of split up the gems, saying these are too powerful, everyone kind of gets one. So, in the movie, now maybe someone correct me here, it sounded like they said, we have the Tesseract, which yes. is the cosmic yeah. cube, yeah. Yes. and we have the power gem, yes. but apparently the power gem, because it's red. The ether. We yeah. have two gems, we can't have both. Yes. So no, 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 no. Well, hold on, hold on. That's what it sounded like. Now I'm, that's now, what they said. Okay. They can't have them both at the same place. So it's not. No, it's wanna, not good to have them. two at one. Sp- they don't want to keep them in the same spot. Hold right. on, hold Price, on. Go ahead. Hold on, Price. I know. I know. We're going to say now. To me, he, now this is where I'm. I'm. I'm starting to have some issues and getting a little confused here because it, it seemed to me they said the Tesseract was yeah. an Infinity Gem. Yes. And yeah. people seem to believe the red. Thing in there was the ether being another infinity gem. Yeah, yes. the power gem. But see, neither the ether or the tesseract, which is actually the cosmic cube, those are not infinity gems. So is the tesseract a quote unquote gem and the ether is a quote unquote that's gem? That's what they're making it out to be I in think this that's movie. That's how they're establishing okay. it within the. Because to me, universe. that seems. So they're making, making basically the tesseract be the space gem. You can, go right. any, you can go from place to place in, the, right. in space for I mean, and stuff like that. And so, like, I kind of don't like that. Yes. I want the gems want to the... be the gems. Why would the Cosmic Cube and the Ether be a gem? They're not gems. And so they said, like, we can't have both at the same place. Take one. And he's like, okay. So, but, like, to me, I, it's a cool scene. But if it's the Ether and the Tesseract are actually the two power, like, I don't. 
that's weird. And I don't. Well, I I, I always I felt like the Cosmic that. Cube is different from the well, gems on the. Well, it is, and it is in the Marvel books. universe, but not in the even, cinematic universe. But I I, I wanted that to stay that yeah. way. But mm. looks so it doesn't seem like totally it's totally misunderstood. Anything. I was under the impression, and maybe I misheard <laughs> or in just uh, creative memory. Um, I thought that they were saying that they had two items of immense power. See, that's what I thought. They're like, we have the Tesseract, which right, is a cosmic yes, cube. Right. We also have this completely unrelated... This infinity Stone that infinity happened to be gem. red. I didn't even think that it was the right. ether. I didn't think that either, but a lot of people said, yeah, oh, it was, it was like a mini ether. version of the stone. Right. So mm-hmm. it's like I, the ether. It was, just, it was in a casing, like you power. don't see it, and it was just red. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, but the but casing was just the same... <laughs> As the casing that Jane, you know, got the went into, where it was like under that big boulder, and Sorry. you saw the red come through it. It was like a small version of it. So, so I, I'm with Bryce. I thought we have the we have the cosmic cube. We have a power gem just because we're fucking Thor. As, we're Asgard. as guardians. We can't have both. Yes. Take this gem. We need to keep the cosmic cube. That's how I saw it. That's, but yeah. everyone else was saying what 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 these guys. Well, are I think saying. the cosmic yeah. cube and the tesseract. It's the same thing, right? Yeah. Right. When they said in the film, but it really, I think it, you possessed minds with it, right? With the no, 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 no. That it was it allows his... the opening of the space for the for the okay. That's yeah. the guys. For the well, aliens he also mind controlled him. Didn't but that's Loki. That's that, yeah. Loki. that was the gem. That was the gem on Loki's staff. Okay, yeah, which we haven't seen since. Which was powered by the Tesseract, though, possibly. Well, they said it was amending the, same, uh, the same power. Yeah, okay. but, but um, it doesn't mean it's not another gem. Well, regardless, I thought yeah. that they already had the power gem at some point in time. They also got the Tesseract at the end of Avengers. They split them up, and that the the Infinity Stone that they well, called it wasn't the Ether, and that the Tesseract right. wasn't an Infinity because Stone. in in a, in a Thor one, you see the gauntlet. The gauntlet's in their room, in their mm-hmm. in their uh, treasure for room. a split. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get yeah. the fuck out, yeah. really? Yeah. 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 They even had a the, Comic Con that right had, past had the whole glo- uh, gauntlet. Oh, at Comic-Con. I am the worst. Before, like, before no, they you, show, you the be, before they show the Aya Amagato. Before, yeah. uh, no, they actually what? sit on that. It's like right? in the back, super blurry, it, you, yeah. but you can tell but it's you can the gauntlet. See it there. All right, I know what I'm doing tonight. But as much as we agree, we don't want it to be though. I I do feel like. What we fear is what they're doing right now. Is- I have no fear of this whatsoever. I actually think it was a smart move because they I mean, need it will to. Work. They need to set up the idea of these power sources yeah. and what they are, and, and it doesn't mean, doesn't, doesn't mean the gem's not inside the tesseract. And it, as far as I'm concerned, when you deal with these things of great power. Saying that they can only take one form is silly. But see, my issue comes with this. When it's like, I've collected the six gems, I've put them on my gauntlet, I now have this power. It's going to be like Thanos, like, okay, well, I got this cube here, I got this box over no, here. This, no, this other, as I said. I got this helmet that's got this other thing, and he's, like, bobbling all these no, objects. I think, I think no, the, no. The, the, the Cosmic Cube, the Tesseract, is going to break, like Charlie says, it'll probably have a gem in there. I think the Ether is going to merge into a gem. We'll form a gem or form something, a gem, yeah. that, something yeah. like that. I think and that's, that's going to happen. that's probably could, well, what could, they need the gauntlet for. And you could use the reality gem to actually morph them into gems. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as I, I think, said. I, and, that one is. and the collector does say when he gets the Ether, like, I got one, you know, five, five to, more to five go. Oh, yeah. Fucking best ending line of the oh, so sick. But and like, he was so weird that it was awesome. That he, he was like so awesome. Yeah, he was like so weird. It was like he's eerie. Yeah, he's kind of yeah, eerie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You but know, like the Thanos ending of Avengers. Everyone except for like the twenty of us, and even with the twenty of us, still I'm sure only half of us were like, "Who the hell? What is yeah. this?" Oh, I, I saw him. I knew. I knew exactly. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. sure. Yeah. Most of the people in our group, but I guarantee you, most of the people when we saw it were like, "Oh yeah, oh, yeah." Wow. No, we're gonna get phone calls. You know, yeah. you know who yeah. who is See, that guy? I'm not even worried about the phone calls. I'm just wondering how many people have come in here to buy collectors' comics since. That <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> not many. Hey, no. push them toward the Infinity Gauntlet. Push yeah, them yeah. toward Thanos Quest. Yeah. Well, forward. no, I just remember with the Thanos ending, like all of a sudden, all the Thanos books like yep. went crazy. Yeah. Yep. So now I'm wondering what this has done to the collector books. All right, we are we are well past time here, but a movie came out, so we yeah, got to talk about it. So we'll we'll hear from Brock next week. Um, we'll let him. Have Brock a completely five hated it. No, 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 no. I'm pretty sure he liked it. I actually so. trolled Brock at the end of the movie. He he kind of smiled. He goes, "Oh, what you think? It was great, huh?" I'm like, "No, man, it was utterly complete <laughs> shit." And he just <laughs> looked at me with his face, going, "What are you talking about?" And he goes, "But at least it's better than Iron Man three. I'm like, "No, Iron Man three is the best thing ever." And he was like. 
You're so stupid, ha- haters. I mean, like, haters. He so far, I was serious about haters. Everything. I liked Iron Man three. Yeah, I, I, I liked Iron Man three too. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Well, there's only one hater, Jim. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're all entitled to your wrong opinions. So, <laughs> all right, we are wrapping up for this week. Thank you, everyone, for coming by, Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Sure, um, thanks for having probably, me. I don't think you're going to be here next week. So. Nope, back to Taiwan. All right. Uh, oh, Mark, to see you again. Been oh, a few yes. weeks. So, everyone else, uh, see you all the time. So, <laughs> I'll be listening to you in Taiwan. All right, excellent. We got one. Uh, if you want to listen to this episode again or any of other podcasts, go to www.geekbox.net or comicsconspiracy.biz. Uh, you can hit us up in the forums, forums.geekbox.net. Contact us at the comic conspiracy at uh, geekbox.net. Uh, we all have a bunch of random crap we do. Uh, Brock has conspiratorbrock.com. Omar has comicsandtokind.com. That's his blog. Uh, Charlie's got the Infinite Longbox podcast at the Infinite Longbox. I'm sorry, at infinitelongbox.com. Or is it no no the right? Just no the. infinitelongbox.com. Infinite Longbox. Yeah, yes, yes, I almost yes, forgot. Yes. Uh, a bunch of us on Twitter. I'm Ryan Higgins. Ryan Brock is Brock Sager. Omar is Comics and Dekine. Larson Bryce. Wait, Bryce Larson is Larson Bryce. Um, much of wise in there. Toby is Toby XI. Charlie is Insanity in Chaos. Huh? Only two. That's a bunch. That's and more, more and than Jim most. is LD Exterminator. Oh, you're on there now? Yeah. LD Exterminator. Oh, yeah. No, I think you think you told us this last yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. Um, we'll be back next week with more podcasts. Good news. All right. Bye.